Thank you, Patty, and uh, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Today we're officially thanking our, our outgoing director and welcoming our incoming one here at Miami-Dade Police uh, Headquarters. Director Juan Perez has worked with the Miami-Dade Police Department for almost 30 years, and for the past four years he's has served as the head of the force, which is the largest law enforcement agency in the southeastern United States. We all knew that this day was coming since uh, JP had signed up a while ago for the state's drop retirement program, but now that it's, uh, the time has arrived it's, and time to say goodbye, it's, uh, it's somewhat bittersweet. We're happy that JP is beginning the next chapter of his life. We don't know what he's going to do, all right? Keep us guessing, I guess. Uh, but we're, uh, we're actually very sad to see him go. He has led many initiatives that have made our community safer while reducing the crime rate and saving lives. JP helped implement the use of body-worn cameras on officers to ensure transparency and protect everyone in situations leading to arrest. He led neighborhood-focused programs that have reduced youth violence. He also led the placement of more than 100 officers in public primary schools in the unincorporated areas of the county following the Parkland shootings in Broward. He helped launch training for officers to better detect and deal with people in crisis situations who may be suffering from mental or emotional problems or have other conditions such as autism. JP also helped the county implement the use of high-tech systems to respond to crimes including shot spotter, license plate readers, and enhanced videos used at the Miami-Dade Police Department's real-time crime center. He directed a community-wide focus to combat the crisis of synthetic opiate and uh, heroin use and we've had a decrease in deaths because of that. And he created the Police Priority Response Team, a specially trained unit formed after the Parkland shootings to respond quickly to incidents that might result in mass casualties. My fondest memory of JP goes back a while and we were looking at uh, different budget scenarios and one included, included was laying off about 80 officers. Uh, I'll never for forget that JP took off his badge and made an impassioned case uh, for his department. He challenged me and frankly uh, I really respected that being a director. You have to fight for your department. I also told him never to do that again, okay? <laughs> but, in all seriousness, um, uh, that did. Uh, I gained a lot of respect for him for that. I will miss your can-do attitude, uh, JP. Thank, thank you for all your service to our, to our county. I will now speak uh, briefly in Spanish before I turn the floor over to JP. Buenos días a todos. Hoy le damos las gracias a nuestro director Juan Pérez que se retira eh, y le damos la bienvenida al nuevo director del Departamento de la Policía de Miami-Dade. El director Pérez ha trabajado con el departamento durante, durante casi 30 años, ha hecho un tremendo trabajo. Se ha enfocado en el entrenamiento y la tecnología que le da a nuestros oficiales lo que necesitan para hacer a nuestro condado más seguro. Entre las iniciativas el uso de cámaras uh, en los uniformes de la policía para asegurar la protección de todos. También asignó más de 100 policías en las escuelas primarias de Miami-Dade después de la tragedia en Parkland. JP ha sido un líder con muchas iniciativas que han hecho más segura a nuestra comunidad. Y todo ese trabajo ha resultado en bajar la tasa de delincuencia y ha salvado vidas. JP ha sido un líder especial, sin pelos en la lengua, Como decimos, uh, cuando quiere algo siempre me lo deja saber y cuando no está en acuerdo conmigo también lo deja, me lo deja saber. Lo respeto mucho. Voy a, a extrañar a, a JP, pero se ha ganado su retiro y le deseo lo mejor. Gracias JP por tu servicio, servicio a nuestra comunidad. Ahora JP va a decir algunas palabras. Now, the, uh, the director of the Miami-Dade Police Department, Mr. Juan Perez. <laughs> I did not know they were there. Um, so it's, it's a bittersweet for me today, folks. Um, you know, obviously it's been a long career. It's been uh, uh, an incredible career. It's an incredible profession. And really, um, it, it's been an honor for the last four years to uh, serve this community. I'm honored by the fact that the mayor named me and appointed me the director of the Miami-Dade uh, Police Department. 
and really bestowing upon me the greatest of responsibilities in my opinion, which is to protect and serve all in this community fairly and equally and really have the, the go, go have no time to sleep, no time to eat, and no time to breathe without thinking of the possibilities of what may happen in this community because it's been a rough ride, it's been rough times with the threats from above, threats within our country, with active shooters. It's just been painstaking at times, but I knew that surrounding me were the greatest men and women that I could ever imagine to fight this fight and to keep this community safe. It has been an incredible experience. I am extremely honored that I had the opportunity to lead this agency and really to facilitate the agency. The leaders are the people in the front lines, the people that I surrounded myself with, and the ones that are handling the calls for service right now as we speak. The ones that are still behind the desk preparing those and making it better and easier for those that are out in the streets to protect this community. Mr. Mayor, thank you again for giving me the opportunity and for all the deputy mayors, uh, the, you know, Maurice Camp has been fantastic, from Chip Iglesias to Russell, Russell Benford, Jack Osterholt, uh, Ed Marquez, of course, the great Jennifer Moon, uh, the, the great Alina Hudak, for all the support. I hope I did not forget anybody. Um, and of course, uh, uh, the one that I refer to as La Mamifera, I don't even know if that's against FEC, but uh, that is Jeanette Vasquez, uh, the mayor's uh, executive assistant, for uh, always keeping me in line. Um, it's been a great ride, folks, and uh, now it's time for me to step aside, and it's not about me, uh, about, you know, you hear a lot of comments about, oh, big shoes to fill. No, it's not about big shoes to fill, folks. This department is ready to move forward. We have a great succession plan, and I sat with Freddie and I told him, it's not about my shoes that you have to fill. You walk in your own feet with your own shoes, and you create your own path. I have no doubt that this community will continue to succeed and be one of the best agencies in this country, without a doubt. Ready for any challenge, we have overcome so much, we have made so many changes in the last few years, but it's not because of me. Once again, it's because of the people that I leave behind. So thank you all, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I think I have to say all of that in Spanish, which is gonna be very difficult. Primero de nada, quería pedirte darle las gracias al alcalde. A Carlos Jiménez por la oportunidad que me dio, estoy honrado por tener el tiempo que tuve como director de este departamento, manejando este gran departamento. Pero todos los éxitos de nosotros, todos, no podía haber pasado si no fuera por la gente, por los hombres y las mujeres que trabajan en este departamento. Un gran departamento con gran personas que están dedicadas a esta comunidad para mantener la paz en esta comunidad, la tranquilidad en esta, en esta comunidad. Estoy bien honrado y, y esta oportunidad es una historia que tantos en esta comunidad han tenido una historia bien similar. Un cubano, nacido aquí, pero cubano americano, de dos padres que llegaron en 1965 sin nada, que lucharon para que yo tuviera esta oportunidad, es algo que yo siempre, siempre, siempre voy a apreciar. Y lo que voy a extrañar más, aparte de los hombres y las mujeres de este departamento, es la comunidad, esta gran comunidad que ha abierto los brazos y sus hogares para que yo pueda comunicarme con ellos y ser parte de su familia, parte de ellos. Gracias por todo. Los voy a extrañar. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Thank you for those words. Uh, and now I would like to welcome the new director of the Miami-Dade Police Department, Alfredo Ramirez, to his new job as director of the Miami-Dade Police Department. through the ranks of the Miami-Dade Police Department, serving in a variety of roles in a career that has spanned more than two decades. For the past two years, Freddie has worked as Deputy Director, where he supervised departmental investigative and police services. He also led the Miami-Dade Public Safety Training Institute 
in the divisions of psychological services and strategic planning. Before that, Freddie was assistant director by, in various divisions, including criminal investigations. And early in his career, he worked in the homicide and narcotics bureaus after extensive work in the hammocks and Cutler Ridge districts. He has received a variety of awards for his work, and he has completed many special training programs. With a strong background, Freddie will be a great director of the Miami-Dade Police Department. And we, uh, we noticed Freddie uh, actually about four or five years ago when we were doing our analysis of the department and, and when actually uh, Juan became the director. I knew that when Juan direct, uh, was, uh, was retiring that Freddie would be the next director. I knew that four years ago. So uh, this process uh, started actually about five years ago. And actually Freddie did very, very well in, the, uh, in our process and uh, it was unanimous. Uh, all of the deputy director, all the deputy mayors that were there, uh, along with myself, felt that the right succession was at the time JD, then JP, and then you, Freddie. Uh, and so this has been coming on for, for quite a while. I'm inspired by his energy, uh, his passion, his intelligence, and his humility. Uh, and there's something special about him, too. Maybe it's a fact that he's a rocker. Uh, yeah, he loves to jam with the guitar with Def Leppard. Uh, and uh, Philip Cohen, Freddie, you're, you're the man, man, okay? So uh, I'm now going to speak briefly in Spanish before I turn it over to, uh, to the new director. Le doy la bienvenida a Alfredo Ramírez, el nuevo director del Departamento de la Policía de Miami-Dade. Freddy ha subido a través de los rangos en el departamento, trabajando en varias posiciones durante su carrera de más de 20 años. Durante los últimos dos años, Freddy ha sido el vicedirector Además, ha sido el líder del Instituto de Entrenamiento de Seguridad Pública y la División de Servicios Sociológicos. Más temprano en su carrera, trabajó en los juros de homicidios y narcóticos y ha recibido varios premios por su trabajo. Con su sólida con su sólida experiencia, Freddy va a ser un director excelente. Es un hombre muy inteligente, con mucha energía y pasión. Y algo que ustedes probablemente no saben, Freddy está en un rockero excelente, toca la guitarra y, y le encanta el grupo Def Leppard. Felicidades, Freddy, por tu nuevo puesto como director. Vamos a darle la bienvenida. Let's uh, welcome now the new director of the Miami-Dade Police Department, uh, Director Freddy Martinez. Freddy Ramirez. <laughs> Thank you for being here. This is a very special moment. Before I, I talk my speech, I want to thank the people who are the most important in my life, which is my wife, Jody, who I've been with since high school, 1988. Don't say high school. I have four beautiful children. Two of them aren't here right now. My oldest daughter, Ashley, was in medical school with the flu, so she couldn't make it. Um, my son, Brandon, who is uh, six days short of a year apart from my daughter, Ashley, he serves this department proudly, and we're very proud of him. My son, Zachary, who's just turned 21 today, he's at school right now. And uh, our little rocket right here, Ryan. Uh, he was uh, the, late, the late one to the party, but he's an inspiration for all of us because when you learn with life is that, you know, life is tough, and there's challenges. You know, we start, I, I wasn't even going to talk about this stuff, but we started off humbly. We started off young. We kept our family together because it's about commitment. And I made a commitment to my family in the middle of college to this day, and, and it's just so humbling to, to be able to be at this position. And when you deal with challenges in life, like, like type 1 diabetes or back surgeries for kids or, you know, not the richest person in the world, the one thing that keeps you going is the grit. And what you learn from your family, from my parents, from my grandfather, the hard work. I come from Elizabeth, New Jersey, and Cuban descent, and, uh, you know, that's who I am. You know, it's, it's real, real deal. So I'm going to be going to the formal component of this. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, not only for your confidence in me, but in our agency as well. I know very well that you recognize the amazing work done each and every day by the men and women of the Miami-Dade Police Department. I am extremely humbled by this opportunity to lead this agency and continue the legacy of my predecessors. My top priority 
is to keep my officers and my community safe. And I look forward to continue working with all of you to achieve our goals. Juan, I congratulate you on an exceptional career. I thank you for your friendship, your mentorship, your leadership. I stood be next behind you and next to you while you made some of the hardest decisions that a police chief can make. And a lot of them are not popular, but I recognize in that time that I was mentored by him that it's not a job to be celebrating and running around popping uh, balloons and blowing out candles. This is real because the lives of men and women of our department and the community is on my hands. It was on Juan's and now it's mine, and I respect that deeply. I love my department. I love my officers. I love my civilian staff just like I love my family. Those are the only two things that keep me going, and the day that I die, I will be buried in this uniform right here, just so you know. Now I'll go to Spanish. I won't be able to say all that in Spanish. Primero, quiero dar las gracias a mi familia, mi esposa Jody, mi hija Ashley, mi hijo Brandon, que es policía en este departamento, mi hijo Zachary, que no está aquí, es su cumpleaños, es de 21 años, y mi, mi más pequeño aquí, que es mi, mi rock star, Ryan. Quiero darle... Uh, uh, gracias al alcalde, no solamente por tener confianza en mí, sino también tener confianza en nuestro departamento. Sé muy bien que tú reconoces el increíble trabajo realizado todos los días por los hombres y mujeres de este departamento. Yo quiero mucho este departamento y mi comunidad, y protegiendo a mis oficiales y la comunidad es mi primera prioridad. Muchas gracias por todo. Gracias, Juan, por tu amistad por todo tu, lo que tú has hecho para este departamento y comunidad. Yo sé que ha sido muy duro porque ha estado contigo sobre todo eso, haciendo decisiones que son decisiones reales, que no son populares, pero es para lo mejor para el departamento y la comunidad. So, muchas gracias por estar aquí y back to the mayor. Thank you. Okay, we'll take uh, any questions, uh, English, Spanish, uh, you know, JT, if you want to come up for uh, any one of us. Any questions? No questions. <laughs> any questions at all? We're good? Okay. Oh, no. Hey, okay. <laughs> Out of all people, we're going to let her make a question. I know that would be your choice. I know yeah, absolutely. That's what I meant. So, um, so Director, you have till the 20th to that, correct? 12. 12. Oh, yes, I'm glad you reminded us all of that. I'm glad you brought that up. It is to the 12th because uh, Freddie's been trying to move my furniture around. He's already had the office painted. He's got his TV in there. Uh, rearranged the furniture. So thank you for bringing that up. It is to the 12th. <laughs> so Director Appointee Ramirez, yeah. we have watched you for a few years and you mentioned literally standing at the side of the director. Give us a sense of what that kind of sea change in your mind is going to be now that you are fixed. That's a great question. Actually, you are on the 12th, by the way. Right yes. <laughs> Actually, you know, it, it encapsulates this whole career. I, I grew up in this department. Like I said, I have my family here, and I'm not telling you the job. Many people here in the crowd are my friends from 1995. And, uh, and you, as you move along the ranks, you have different perspectives of police work and what you think is the way to do the job. Everybody thinks they know how to do the job better. But when you're standing there in front of the press on a scene of a, a child being killed or an officer dying or a, a mistake that maybe one of our officers have made and, and you have to answer to the community, it's very sobering. And not many people can do that. You know, it's easy to stand there and and give a fake response, but you have to answer to the 2.9 million residents of the community and the 45, the 4,100 employees of this department. So I, I respect that, and I know what that, that entails, and, and I got no better lesson than from Director Perez, Director Patterson, Director Loftus, which were the contemporary, Director <coughs> Parker, you know, and, and Alvarez when I was a sergeant, and I know Fred Taylor, who's the, the godfather of the modern policing here in Miami-Dade Police. Después de la tragedia reciente con la alta de policía. 
investigación y la tragedia que ocurrió? ¿Usted va a seguir la misma línea de esperar la investigación por parte de la SIOD y también contestar preguntas que va a seguir haciéndose el público sobre lo, lo, lo que ocurrió y qué cambios pudieran ocurrir después de eso? Sí, no, eh, mira, yo, yo y Juan somos hermanos y, y lo que creemos aquí en este departamento lo hicimos juntos. Y hay que tener balance, tengo que mantener balance con mis oficiales, que su investigación y sus protecciones pasen y también hay que hablar con la, con la comunidad para explicar el proceso y asegurar de que nosotros hacemos todas las cosas con transparency, yo no sé cómo decirlo en español, transparencia. ¿okay? Y todo es balance, balance. Without a doubt. Eso es como yo trabajo, even. No, no sé decisiones por hacerlo. Director Perez, how about if you can recap some of your highest moments and some of the toughest moments here uh, as director? Man, I, I think that would be, uh, we would be here all day. You know, it's uh, been a roller coaster ride because obviously in law enforcement, there are many great things. People don't remember the great things, but you certainly remember the bad things. And um, they stay with you. So. I don't want to go there. Thank you. Dr. Pat, excuse me. Uh, yes, you already know my next career. <laughs> my question to you is, um, you know, you're retiring a bit earlier, about six months, uh, maybe this June was going to yeah. be the date. So talk to us a little bit about why. Well, you know, being in the drop program, in essence, you are retired, and you can leave at any given time. Um, it's just an opportunity that the, uh, the state offers you to stay behind. Um, there are many uh, things that, that you know we'll take into consideration. Um, one of them was opportunities that are, are coming, um, perhaps. Um, I haven't made up my mind yet in uh, the direction I'm going to go. Um, I'm obviously going to stay here local and, and try and do the best I can um, for this community and stay involved in one way or another. Um, the other is you know giving an opportunity for somebody else that certainly is deserving uh, to run this department to have a nice uh, career as we face the uh, inevitable, which is a uh, change in, in the Miami-Dade Police Department with the Sheriff's Office. So giving uh, the opportunity for Freddie to be here for an extremely long time and, and really put his name um, on this department, leave a, a mark on this department so that the community gets to uh, know him and perhaps it builds him up to be the first Sheriff of the Miami-Dade Police Department. And I think the previous question, he asked about highs and lows. So this the is, highs you know, as you, as you the highs, obviously, is the opportunity to run this department, to lead this agency. Um, but I really, uh, you know, I can tell you that I've never, I never ever thought I was going to be the director of the police department. That was never my ambition. It just happens to come my way. I'm a person of faith, and when things come your way, you don't say no. You grab onto those situations. So I was uh, appointed to be the director of the police department, asked to do this job, and I don't shy down from challenges because this has been an incredible challenge for a person who considers themselves to be a police officer that happens to have a gold badge and some stars. But I can tell you right now, I would have no greater desire to be out in the street handling some call right now that is challenging and by nature of the, what the call is. Um, so I, I take that to heart. Um, obviously the lows, I didn't want to get into the lows. You know why I don't want to get into the lows? Because the lows are very ugly for us uh, for, and for me personally, where I lost an officer in, in gunfights. So I don't want to go there. What did you intend to do with the mayor when he was thinking about reducing staff? <laughs> <laughs> I intended to, I was the deputy director and I intended to communicate to the mayor, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get an appointment with him to talk to him. It was very difficult to get to. Uh, I couldn't get on his schedule, so I happened to do it at an academy, a graduate academy. And, uh, uh, look, you, you know. You got an appointment really fast. <laughs> <laughs> by phone, the next morning, yeah, I did get an appointment by phone yeah. twice. Uh, <laughs> And, and my ear hurt, and I have to switch to the other side. <laughs> and a question for soon to be director, uh, Freddie Ramirez. Um, talk to us about the initiatives. You know, obviously, Miami Dade County is, is huge, and there's a lot of need here. Uh, what is it that you want to take on, perhaps, that might be different than your predecessor? Well, we're going to build off of what my friend Juan created. That's uh, so he already modernized the way we police this community. Um, you know, unfortunately, as different administrations come, there are different threats. Right now, when he came on, we dealt with budget issues, you know, police, community relations. So he made the, the hard decisions to do that, follow the 21st century policing, attend major city chiefs, and learn and create what I think is the benchmark 
of policing large communities, which is an inclusive type of style of policing. Moving forward, I want to focus on officer wellness. I want to focus on gun violence. Even though we've made great gains, it's still there. And that affects my officers. Because those same guns that are used in the community are used, can be used towards my officers. So that to me is a priority because I believe as a head of a police agency, the number one priority is to keep the community safe. So that's a really interesting goal because that's been a goal for the last three decades here. So what do you think can be done differently to stop the gun violence? Well, ma'am, there's been an evolution with that in policing. If you look back, there was a heavy enforcement approach. There was a time years ago where there wasn't even much of a patrol, and now we're so strategic. We work with community groups like the Circle of Brotherhood, people that we've never before worked with. And we all work in a cooperative, thinking together how we can minimize the gun violence. Because even though I speak of gun violence, if you compare our numbers to other cities, I hate to use this word, we're doing good, but we could do better. Because so long as if people die, that's not good. We gotta get better. And I think we're on the right track. And just because one left doesn't mean that all the gains we did stopped. No, we have to evolve. That's how a community, a society grows. And it's inclusive, all of us, the community and the police together. Well, see, vamos a seguir los programas que ya tenemos. Nosotros trabajamos no solamente con, con policía y, y con el State Attorney's Office, también con miembros de la comunidad. Trabajamos juntos para, para resolver esos problemas. Los números de violencia son más pequeños como otra ciudad, pero siguen, todavía tenemos violencia. So es importante que seguimos trabajando juntos, eh, eh, haciendo sistemas para combatir ese problema hasta que un día que lo ponemos, you know, hacer lo mínimo. Sí, ha sido por 30 años, pero nosotros hemos sido mucho buen trabajo en ese arena de, de que se dice de ama, o sea, gun violence. You know, and, and, you know, Freddy's nervous up here right now, folks. But uh, we have, we, we have been through this for the last, uh, really, seven years, when I was three years as deputy director, and, and, you know, Freddie's been by my side the entire time. As the mayor said, it was actually a little longer than five years. It's actually uh, seven plus years since this vision of the mayor's uh, was, was to prepare this department for the future. But one of the things that we figured out in law enforcement, and more importantly, that the mayor has figured out, and, 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 and his deputy mayors, is that crime is not controlled by police. It is not reduced by police. We come after the fact. The crime has already occurred. We're putting people behind bars. Yeah, that's great. However, how, what do we do to prevent crimes? So it's not only about policing, it's about collaboration, not only with community, but our elected officials, beginning with the mayor, have, have initiated so many programs in this community to help reduce the crimes that that is the true way that we have to uh, focus on. And we have to be strategic going after the worst of the worst, but there has to be programs in place that are supported by the community that will continue to enhance the probability of a child that is born that is less fortunate to have opportunities in life. Because if the child is born in a less fortunate situation, if there's a dump pile on the side of the road, if there's an abandoned car, abandoned house, or crack is being sold, prostitutes standing in the street corner, that child has little, little hope. And then once they make contact with police, it is too late. So how do we change that? And it has to be a collaborative measure between our government, our elected officials, programs, and I think we've done that. We've began a, an incredible path so that the future mayor, whoever happens to come in, continues to follow and focus on the same vision that it takes all of us in this community to reduce crime. We cannot say that it is a police matter any longer. That does not work. We have to say it is a community matter. You running for office? <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> Bueno, el, el Departamento de Policía sigue en, en, en la obra que ha empezado, trabajando junto con el alcalde y con los, con los, con los comisionados en tratar de reducir, siguiendo, siguiendo la pelea, reducir 
esa batalla de reducir el crimen en nuestra comunidad. Sabemos que la colaboración entre todos nosotros y en la comunidad entera, con programas y con y más trabajos, ayudando a las personas económicamente, es la primera manera que se puede reducir el crimen. Eh, para mí, eh, personalmente, yo tengo oportunidades que estoy mirando ahora a ver en qué pasos voy a tomar. No he hecho una decisión todavía eh, y la tengo de hacer pronto en los, en los próximos meses, pero por eso me fui un poquito temprano para no perder las oportunidades que vienen. ¿Quizás en la política? Eh, no sé todavía, no, me, no, no he hecho esa decisión. Any other questions? Seguridad en Super Bowl. ¿Qué qué? Seguridad en Super Bowl. Seguridad en, en Super Bowl. Eh, la seguridad en Super Bowl, como eh, hemos estado en, en, en uh, estamos planificando por el Super Bowl por mucho tiempo. Uh, todos los planes ya, ya se están acabando. Hay seguridad más. Uh, se ha aumentado la seguridad. Hay otras medidas que, que hemos uh, tomado, que vamos a tomar. Que de verdad no vamos a hablar de ellos, pero, pero eh, estoy asegurado que todo lo que es necesario, todo lo que podemos hacer para asegurar lo que es el Super Bowl, que todo el mundo tenga un, uh, que, que se diviertan dura, durante el Super Bowl, se ha hecho aquí en el condado de Miami Day. Yo tengo todo, eh, toda la confianza en, uh, en el departamento y su capacidad de, de lograr este, un, un gran evento para aquí, para el condado de Miami Day. Any other questions? Sure. Um, we've been planning for the Super Bowl for some time. Uh, I mean, last year we we went to uh, to Atlanta, looked at their operations, and and I can tell you that, that we're well prepared for with the security measures here in Miami Dade County for the Super Bowl. We this is not the first time we've hosted a Super Bowl. We're actually going to be, I think, this is the 11th time with more one any other city. We have a great police department that's heading up our efforts here. Uh, we're in cooperation with our federal, state, and local partners. It's going to be a, a huge effort on the part of law enforcement uh, to make sure that, that the Super Bowl and everybody that attends the Super Bowl has a great time and that security is the last thing they need to worry about. We've got that. doesn't mean that, you know, that uh, things could happen, but um, I am confident, and I, I, tell, you know, I tell these guys every day that, you know, we are, we're probably the best prepared. We have the... The, the best departments, uh, the best training, um, and the best intelligence to, to keep our community safe. I have all the confidence in the world that our police department will keep us safe and that we'll have a very, very successful Super Bowl. Anything else? Algo más? Thank you very much. Congratulations, Director Ramirez.